Okay, I want to kind of do an intermediate bird design from the pattern book where you can go in and take another design. And the goal is going to be the magpie. And um, what I noticed is that it has a similar shape to the red winged blackbird. And the blackbird can also be done completely in black and make a crow. Okay, so that's something you can do with that. Now, with the red with the um, magpie, the tail looks longer to me. So I know I want to add length to that. If I want a base that's on my pattern, I know I need to do a tail. Um, it seems to start with blue, and it's kind of iridescent and goes into a greenish color. So um, I have that nice blue that I used from. The peacock and that uh, kind of a turquoise green I can use and then I need black and white so I know I need those three colors now the other thing you have to gauge is um, it looks like it's half white half black so the back half is going to be black and the front half is going to be white until you get to like the chest area and um, do a short row with that. So that's what I'm seeing. And the wings look like they are done in such a way as you short row and then like like I did here. You do like a section in white. Chunk in white. So it varies between the bird. Um Yeah, looking at it, looks like it needs to be half white, half black till you get to the chest area, which is usually a short row through here. Um, then I know just before I would start the head that I need to go and change to black completely. Um, then I can do a blend out with the paint pen. Um, that's how I smooth out the edges because a lot of times it's just easier to chunk it and then go back with a paint pen and make alterations to it to where it looks nice and blended so it looks like when i go and do the bottom here that'll be black and then half white half black to do the body until i get to the chest area here and it looks like i'll need to change to black entirely and then black for that and then the wings looks like I'll need to be doing blue here and then do white and then probably go in with a black paint pen and kind of smooth that out. And I think that's how I'm going to need to do it. So what I need to do is extend my tail probably about 10 more rows, I would say. Yeah, I'd probably do 10 more rows on the magpie, on the on the tail. Start out with the blue, switch over to the green, and mix it. So, when you start looking at that, you start looking at, okay, then I know I need to use the red wing blackburn pattern for the magpie. And I need to keep in mind, okay, well, what I also need to keep in mind is when I did the red wing blackbird, I didn't do a half and half. So you have to keep that in mind um, to know how to do color chunking. It's not that difficult. Um, you do it on a small project to get an idea of it. So we know we're going to be doing some color chunking here. And um, that's how I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be basing it off of my red wing blackbird. I'm going to extend the tail. and. Um, I think all I need to do on my blackbird is just drop that wing a little bit more down here when I sew it on. So that's not really a change. So I think I'll print up my red wing blackbird and start doing my scribble out on my notes. And uh, I think that's how I'm going to go about this. So you definitely want a blue. A darker blue or a rich blue color royal blue you definitely want a uh, kind of turquoise green for that tail you want black and you want white and um, 
that should do you for this one. I'm not going to do wire legs or anything, so I really am just going to follow the blackbird and do some very minor alterations to the pattern. So I'm going to print that up and then we will get started on how to start loom knitting this up. Okay, so I've gone in and I've printed out my red wing blackbird and I make notes on it. So I've changed the tail up. Um, I noticed it was using 15 pegs and honestly the um, magpie's tail is not that broad and so I wanted to narrow it out. So I decided I would do 11 pegs instead. Okay. So by doing that, um, I also know that the tail is longer, and so I chose to um, do five rows in the blue and then go in and do uh, 20 rows in the turquoise, and that gives me 25 total rows that I'm working on on the tail. Okay. Um, so what. I'm doing on the tail you see that alteration now that's something that you can mentally do you can say oh well the tail of the magpie is not that broad then you know you need to just reduce the amount of pegs you're going to use and make it narrower okay and then you can look at it and say well it's also a bit longer and 15 rows it doesn't seem like it's going to be long enough looking at the blackbird. So I think that um, 25 rows should make it long enough for the magpie. Okay. So this is me going in and adjusting even a pattern that's already written. So the tail is the biggest thing that is really different from the red winged blackbird. Okay, so I'm going to start off in blue, and I'm going to start off chain casting on 11. Stitches. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Let's take that one. That there. You always want to do an odd number, just so you know, because you are doing a rib stitching and you want it to slip on the edges so you get a nice chain look on both sides. So that's the reason why I do the odd number. Okay, so basically I'm going to do five rows in blue and then 20 rows in turquoise. So what I'm going to do is slip one, purl one, knit one all the way to the end. So purl one, knit one all the way to the end. Okay, and you're going to repeat this in this color for a total of five rows. Okay, so five rows in blue, then you're going to switch up and do 20 rows in the turquoise color, and that'll be your tail. So pause the video and complete that much. And then when we come back, I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so in my Red Wing Blackburn pattern, um, I did a, a prep decrease. And because um, I, do, I don't really want to cover 12 
in 11 pegs, I think I will go ahead and do a prep decrease. And what that means is um, you're going to be decreasing um, every other stitch. So you're kind of about halfway down from what you originally were. So I knit two and then I take the stitch back, toss the bottom loop over and move it over one. And I'm gonna move that over one. Okay. So you knit the two stitches, you take it back one, toss the bottom loop over and move it over. And I'm gonna go ahead and move those over. Okay, and then you need the next two stitches. So you should end up getting down to, I think, about six stitches. Get to pick one back. And then get one. So, yeah, six stitches. So you're going to move that over and that one over and that over. Okay, make sure I've got that right. Yeah, okay. So three empty, six, and then three to cover half the limb. Okay, and then when you pull it down, it should be a long tail. Okay, now that we are done with our tail, we're going to snip an end and get that out of the way for now. Okay, so I've made a note going over here, starting the body. Um, and start with black and so what we'll do is, it's a drawstring cast on. So you, most of us have done a drawstring cast on, weave in and out of all your pegs. And then you toss the loop over every other loop over. Then it says that you're going to knit for four rows because this is pretty much I wrote down my notes as to the changes. Okay, and that's how you're going to go about it. Okay, so you know that it's going to change to half white and half black right after the feet. So you know that you're going to be working just as normal. And then after the feet, you know you're going to need to go half and half, half white, half black. And um, the only thing you may struggle to figure out is what's your back and what's your front. But your tail is your back area. So you know that's going to be black and that's going to be white. Okay. And so here's where I started making notes about um, what area I'm having in black and white. Okay, so um, so here it says I knit for four rows in black. So go ahead and pause the video, complete four rows, and then we'll come back. Make sure you're not touching those tail feathers until I say to. Okay, so now we're to row five and keep in mind that um, I'm basically doing the blackbird here. So if you're struggling, I'm showing you how to go about um, making it. Okay, so keep that in mind too. You can use this video to go about making your blackbird. It's just not all these color changes. It's mostly just black. And if you're doing a crow, you can make a crow out of this. Okay, so it says on here for row 5, knit 14. So 1, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay. Then it says for your feet, knit four for four rows, knit three, knit two, knit three, knit four for three rows, bring original loops back, knit two together four times. All right. So what you want to do is you want to put a stitch marker on. And because I'm working with black, I'm going to have a hard time seeing. So I'm actually going to um, put my stitch markers on if I can find a bit of Okay. So I'm actually going to put stitch markers on this one. Mostly because I'm working with black and you can't see it really easily. So I'll need four. All right. So keep in mind you're going to repeat this in the next four slots. All right. So I'm going to show you how to do this in one and then you're going to need to go back and um, Sorry, I didn't put the extra light on. Okay, you're going to need to go back and uh, to this part of the video and do it again in the next four slots. Okay, because I'm only going to show you the ones. Alright. Now, keep in mind, you can add the legs, metal legs, if you want, like the wire legs that I show. That's entirely up to you. All right. So, it says to knit four for four rows. So, there's row one. There's row two. Row three. Row four. And then knit three. Knit two. Knit three. Knit four, three rows. One. Two, and three. So what you do is you create a pyramid, create a point, and then it says to bring the original loops back. You just bring the corresponding stitch markers back on their correct stitches. And take them off. You can go ahead and start putting them on the next four. That way you don't forget to do it. Okay, so you take those off. You brought the original lips back on all four. And Then you're going to knit two together four times. So here's one, two, three, four. You repeat the same thing in the next four pegs, exactly what we just did, and then to finish the row, knit two. At this point, we're going to be starting to switch things up. So row six is um, where you're going to start adding in your white and I'm going to show how to do that. Okay, so pause the video, complete your other foot and then finish doing the knit two to complete the row and then we'll come back and start showing how we're going to add in the extra color. Okay, I have done my two feet and if you're wondering what they look like, this is what they look like. And um, so that's what they look like. If you can tell from black yarn makes it hard to see. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to add our white. And remember that the front section is 
this is your white section, this is your black. So all you have to do is keep that in mind. Wherever your tail is is where the back is. Okay. Alright, now. At this point, what we want to do, because all we've done is add the color. Okay, it says on row 6 it was just knit a full round, but um, because we're starting the white, half of it needs to be white and half of it needs to be black. So we've kind of made that a self-explanatory thing. So we're going to go ahead and knit over our black section, just 12 pegs. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And you come back the direction you came from, pick up your white, and you're going to knit 12 as well. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, we've met up. All right, so that is one row. When you know you come back, that's two rows, all right? So in row seven is where it's going to change up, and we're going to be bringing the tail stitches back over, okay? So what you want to do is you want to put, make sure that the black or the white goes under and over. They cross the same way every time. Okay, I'm going to do the black side first, and I have a note that I'm bringing over the tail stitches now. So I'm going to knit over two, three, and then knit over two together. Now, if you want, you can tie your tail off at this point so that it's not running around anywhere. Okay. And so you're just going to knit two together six times. And then knit three. Okay. Then you come around over here and you pick up your white. You come back the direction you just came. You pick up your white. And then you get the 12 over here, okay? Now this is where it can get challenging when you're trying to do color chunking, you're trying to split it up. Um, it's keeping up with where you're doing the work at, okay? So on that one, because you knew that you when you're bringing in the tail stitches, you know you were going to be doing that black side and um, because you're working on the white side you know it's just going to be a regular knit. At this point you're going to be doing color chunking for a number of rows so um, let me this up real quick. So you're going to do this for 14 rows so you're going to go back and forth for 14 rows. So here's the thing. To keep up with that, when you meet over here, it's row one. When you meet back over here, it's two rows. Okay, so um, that's an easy way to keep up with it. So you're going to do this color chunking for a total of 14 rows. And then when we come back, I believe we'll be starting to work on the chest area. Okay, so I'm going to have you pause the video and complete your 14 rows of this color chunking that we're doing here. And then we will come back and start working our chest area. Okay. So, yes, this is a little more challenging than just doing, say, the blackbird or doing crow, but um, I think it's, that's it.
to work on the concept of how to change the colors. And you know, this is how I go about designing a whole bunch of new birds, tweaking bits and pieces of what I already know. Now, when I have to start from scratch, I get mess ups. I had my mess ups when um, doing the um, swan. I've had mess ups when doing the peacock. Um, you get them and you write your changes down and then you go after it again. You don't stop. Okay. So don't give up just because it may not work the first time around when doing it. And no, you can change in the middle when you realize, oh, well, that's not working or that's going to be too many rows. You can stop where you're at and make a note. Okay. That's how you go about designing. All right. So pause the video. And that was two rows right there and you 12 more rows. Okay. So pause the video and get that much done. And then we'll come back and we're ready to start our chest area. And this is where it can get more complicated. Um, trying to understand, but when you come back, you're going to be here on the body. Okay, you're going to have completed that much. Basically, you're halfway done. Um, so then it's completing the rest of it. Okay, so complete 12 more rows, or total 14 rows, and then we'll come back and be ready to pick up on what I would call row 23. And that's where it gets interesting. Okay. Okay. Now we've gotten our 14 rows done. As you can see, this is what it should look like. Okay. So we have a wrap and turn section. And I think I'll go ahead and get my black out of the way. There's nothing I need to do with black. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap under and over. And get my 12 on the black. And that way I don't have to worry about it. Okay, now on the white, it says to knit 11, wrap and turn, knit 10, wrap and turn. Okay, so you're going to knit your way over. You're going to do a wrap and turn section, and it's going to go down to 8. So, I'm going to Get your way over, grab and turn, and get your way over to the other side. Wrap and turn. So that's a knit 10 wrap and turn. This is a knit 9 wrap and turn. Knit 8 wrap and turn. Eight wrap and then the 8 wrap and turn. Okay, now you're going to knit eight, and then it says to knit two together two times. So you knit eight. And then you knit two together two times. One and two. Again, you're going to go under, over, 
then neutron black, which is what the next thing is, neutron black, then change over into your white. Then you knit 10 and 2 together two times. Generally, I do the short row thing once with the white. You'll end up doing it with the black next. Okay. So then you work your way through. And then it's just a single row of knit. Okay, knit two together. Knit two. Under and over, one row of knit. I'm probably going to get two rows in just to get me back where I want to be. So, one row of knit. And then it's going to be to a repeat of this. But instead, we're going to move to black because the head of the magpie is black and part of the chest is black. Okay. Now. What we're doing is I'm going to go ahead and knit an extra row to get me back where I need to be at my starting point. And here's the reason being on that is I'm fixing to switch over to all black. So what I'm going to need to do is add an extra row, okay, to get me back where I need to be. Not a big deal. That isn't going to affect the design that much to add an extra row. Now, if you're adding like two and three and four rows, yeah, that's, that'll affect the design. So, um, once we get around here, we'll close it off and then we will go from where we were. Okay, and I'll need to make a note of that. As you can see, I'm going to make a note of that so that I know that I'm doing two rows instead of one. And that's an adjustment. Okay. So, we decided we're doing two rows, so 25 through 26. Okay, now, we're going to tie off our white, because we're done with it. The rest of this body and head is black. So, if you're following and wanting to make the black bird, this is the challenging part anyway. So, um, that's how you do the short row section with two colors. Now I'm going to show you how to do the short row section with one color. And this is as it was written at this point. Okay. So this time you're going to knit 23, wrap and turn, knit 10, wrap and turn. Okay. So we're to the second part. So you're going to just knit your way all the way around. Okay, and then you wrap and turn. Then you're gonna knit 10 wrap and turn. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if you were doing the red wing black bird or the crow, you're doing the short row like this twice rather than just once. In the one color. But because the um, wrap and turn, the magpie has a partial chest in white and black. We have to do one half of the short row 
section in white and the other half in black. Not a big deal. Wrap and turn. And then you're going to then do the knit eight and then knit two together two times. And yes, it's going to be on this side when you're doing one color. Then you're going to knit 11. Knit two together two times. And knit ten. Okay. And we're to the head. So that completes the body. All right. So now we're to here. Okay. So we're to the head, and at first it says start. By knitting 11. So we knit 11. 1, we're going to knit 12. Start one, two, 10 pegs. Yeah, it's a narrower head. So slip 1, knit 11. So no, you're knitting 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Um, it says you're going to start working flat over ten pegs, and that would be accurate when you compare that this is a twelve peg head and this is a ten peg. So um, that does make a difference. Okay, so what you're going to do now is it says to slip one knit nine because you're starting to work flat. So slip one, knit nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you're going to slip one and knit nine for eight, nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-six rows. Okay. Set. Slip one, knit nine for six rows. Yes, you're not going all the way back to the starting point. So slip one, knit nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so that's two rows of that. So go ahead and do four more rows and um, pause the video and we'll come back and do a short row section. Okay, so let's see, we're down here. Now we go, and it says to slip one, knit seven, wrap and turn. So slip one, knit seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, wrap and turn. Knit six, wrap and turn, knit five, knit four, knit two. So you're going down to two. Okay. So. Come over here and you knit six, one, two, three, four. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Wrap and turn. Knit five. Wrap and turn, knit four, wrap and turn, knit three, wrap and turn, knit two, wrap and turn. And then it says knit two, knit two together three times. Okay. For a second, I thought I didn't see that it said to knit 
for you two together three times. Okay, and it did. All right, so we're good. So. I know we have a mistake in here. Okay. Wrap and turn. Make sure I don't knock that one in. <laughs> okay, there we go. And knit two together three times. One, two, three. Yep, one. And then the next row is knit, slip one, knit five, knit two together three times, knit one. So at this point, I think we're really just following the pattern. You gotta love when you get to those sections, it makes life easy. Okay, knit two together. Three times. Knit one. Okay. Then it says to knit for just two rows. You no. Know. Say row 36 or 31, repeat row 34 and 35. Okay. So the last two rows that we just did with the short row section, you're going to repeat that. So the last two rows we just did, you're going to repeat again. Okay. So pause the video, repeat that section again. And then we're going to go and do the B row. Okay, so we're doing row 38. It says slip one, knit one, and then you start on the beak. And looking through it, six, knit six for two rows, knit five, knit four for two rows, knit three, knit two for two, two, two for four rows, knit three, knit four for two rows, knit five, knit six for two rows. Bring original loops back. I need eggs one and six, so there's only two I need. Okay. So. We have slip one, knit one. Then we need to put a stitch marker on thing one and six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Okay. You will have to do some sewing up on the beak on this one, if I remember correctly. It was one of the earliest ones I made, and I'm at the end of this um, series. Okay, so it says to knit six for two rows. Okay, so there's, here's going to be row one. Okay, and then here's going to be row two. Okay. Then it says to knit five. Okay, so we're going to knit five. One, two, three, four, five. This is says to knit four for two rows. Okay, so one and two. Then knit three, one, two, three, and then knit two for four rows. So one, two, three. Actually, I think that should be five rows. I'm going to do that. I'll do five rows. And I'll show you the meaning behind that. It's the five rows. Then it says to start by knitting three, one, two, three, and then knit four for two rows. So here's one. Two, 
three, four, and then one more row of that. One, two, three, four, and knit five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. There. That's there. Five. Is something not look right? No, oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, I'm just losing my mind this morning. Sorry. Okay, and then knit six for two rows. So here's one. And two. And then it says bring original loops back on uh, that's what screwed me up. Okay, so you're going to bring the original loops back. I'll have to make a note on this. Bring the original loops back on pages 1 and 6. And normally you would... Knit 2 together, knit, but we need to finish the row. So what you're going to do is knit 2. I'll make a note. Okay, um, and yes, I'm one who will go in and change notes and everything because I know it's going to look the same. All right, so the next row is going to need to be slip one, knit one, knit two together, knit what, four? Yeah, and knit two together, and then Knit two, and that's going to be four thirty nine. Let me that forty. The collation notes changed. Okay, there, because um, I, I'm trying to create a pyramid here, as you can see, where it's nice and has a nice sharp point. It has more of a gradated head. It's not so distinctive, okay? All right, so we're going to slip one, knit one, knit two together, knit four, one, two, three, four, knit two together, and then knit two. Okay. Um, the reason why I had to change that is because I added a single row here on the knit two in order to keep my pyramid nice. Now you can follow it exactly as I had it, no problem, it'll turn out, okay? And you'll end up right where you need and you won't need to do this extra row. Okay, now you're going to do two rows of slip one, knit nine. So here's one And here's two. Okay, this is where it says to start gathering chain. And we're going to do something a little different than what we've done with other birds on this one. Okay, so it's a challenge on the black. You may have been needing to put a stitch mark every time you slip the stitch. But um, you were wanting to add the chains back. And if you've seen any of my other videos on the birds, you'll know what I'm doing. 
So every slip you've done, you've created a chain and you're going to add it back to this peg. It's just normally you're adding it back to like pegs 12 or something like that, but we're adding it to the narrower section and I, um, I have an adjustment for this, so to work it back. All right. So then you knit it over. Working with black is rough business. Trying to see it all. Okay, we got that side. Then it says to gather it, knit like what was it, seven together, knit eight, then do the same thing. Um, so we've done that one. Let me go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that is good. All right. Okay, then we're gonna bring the chains up on this side. I won't lie, it's going to be hard to see. Do the best you can. All right, then you're going to toss all those loops over. And yeah, I kind of ear out it because I think it's a little more secure to do that, but no, I don't really. Need to do that much. All right. Now, what it says is to Knit seven together and then knit thirteen. That's working in the same direction. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Let's make sure we're at our halfway point. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, at this point, that finishes row 42, and it says to just knit a full row. So we need to do, come back to this spot right here. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. Uh, no, I know it's 12 once we get here. Just need to count out 12 again. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. We are back to our starting and finishing point. Let me make sure. Yeah. Okay. Now, you want to cut your tail. We're going to do a weave in bind off, which is what it says to do. Okay. And you want to cut long enough so you can do some sewing. Okay. All right. Okay. So, the weave in bind off is you go to the next peg. Make a stitch, toss over, pull through, then come back to where you were, toss over, pull through. And if you've done any of my other birds, which you should because this is a more challenging bird, go to the other side, toss over. So if you've done the Kitchener cast on, you're doing kind of like this, you're just doing it in reverse, but it doesn't look like a Kitchener cast on, it does a drawstring. It just draws a drawstring straight rather than in a circle. Back and forth. 
all the way across. So go ahead and pause the video and finish your weave in bind off. What I call it. I'm sure there's a better technical term for it, but that's what I'm calling it. And we will go from there. Okay. Uh, looks kind of wonky, doesn't it? Let's see if we can't set our stitches. There we go. Alright, now, what I like to do is when I'm doing the actual drawstring, you know, I like to start in the middle and pull it, and then pull it on the end. And that way it has a nice pull. And there you have it. Look at that. That has a nice point to it. Looks very much like the magpie. Look at that. All right, now we want to stuff. And the reason we want to stuff is because I can tell you you're going to need to sew up that head. And pull out some stuffing. Okay, start with a little. Not a lot. Start with a little. Okay. The reason why you want to put some in the beak area is because it's a slow kind of gradients to the beak. Okay. So yes, we are going to sew that up. Okay. And then um try not to overstuff. That's a challenge. I won't lie. Okay. And just go a little at a time. And then at this point we're just kind of stuffing it away. Usually like to shape a little. Try not to overstuff. And the reason why we're not overstuffed is we don't want the stitches pulling. Because as soon as you get stitches pulling, guess what? In a blackbird you can see the white polyfill underneath. And you don't want that. Okay, so down here you should have a draw string. Where is it? Which side is it? Where are you? There it is. Okay, start your draw string. Make sure you got everything. Okay. And do keep in mind we're going to be sewing up here, so I'm trying to get as much of the All right. So once you draw string that down there, let me tell you, it makes it harder. Okay. Shaping, shaping, shaping. All right, now let's close up that beak. So we're going to close the side up a little bit more here. And then we're going to come over here and close the beak up. See what that's doing. Nice beautiful point. Right there. And then keep closing it up. And that nice beautiful. See? Okay, now what you want to go in here and just close up this area some more and then do the cinched eye area. I don't like to do a whole lot of Cutting and pasting when it comes to the seam. Okay. Now, we're going to go over here and start cinching the eye area in. So, that looks about where I want the eyes. Go through them here. You want to do this a few times, that way you get a nice cinched in area. Now, check yourself again. Looks like there's a little more white there showing than I want. So I'm going to go down. Okay. 
just slightly clean it up. That's empty. We got a look that's very much like the bag. Okay. Send it through. Okay. Let's cut it. Okay. All right, look at that. Okay. Beautiful. All right. So you want to hot glue in. And again, if you've been watching my videos and you want to make a whole bunch, get these. Decide what size I you want. Looks like it's too small. Maybe going up to this side. Yeah. Side on your eye size. I hot glue those in. Okay. And then you're going to close up your bottom. Okay. And then you're going to do your wings. Now, you're going to do your wings um, flat, like these wings here, which I'll include the link down at the bottom. And uh, what you typically do, there's a section at the end that's a little different where you um, are going in and you're working everything in black. And then when you get to rows 29 through 30, which is two rows, you're going to knit the two rows. Then you're going to do a prep decrease. And I showed you that prep decrease over here at the tail. Okay. And then you bring all the stitches together side by side, like we did the tail, okay? Because I don't typically show the wings. Um, yeah, and then you knit a row, okay? So remember what we did with the tail right through here where we condensed it down from 11 stitches to 6? Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to do the closed wing all in black, and then um, it'll tell you on like row 29 and 30, you're going to switch up to white and just knit for two rows. Prep decrease, just like you did on the tail. Bring all the stitches together and knit in white, and you will drawstring it off. Okay, so this is what it should look like. All right. So it, um, as you can see, I've knit it black all the way, and this is going to be white. All right. So I knitted two rows, as you can see, in there, and I did a prep decrease and did all that. So keep that in mind. Um, I can try to show how to do that where you do the top of the wing show you how to do the top of the wing the other option is you get to the last couple of rows and you change up like i did here on this scarlet tanager it make a little bit of difference but not that much okay but um I think on the wing you start with blue. So yeah, the wing you're doing blue and then you switch up to white. Okay. And because of the way the black is. So I was thinking we might have had to do some color variations here, but that does scoop neck like we needed for the magpie. So go ahead and pause the video. And actually, we're done pretty much, but I may come back and try to show you the top of the wing. But um, hot glue the eyes in, close up the bottom, do your wings. They're in blue until you get to the top and do white. Um, now, you probably will need to do a little bit of color variation on your brush pen. So, I'm going to say pause the video and get your wings done. and. Close that up and hopefully your eyes on. 
and uh, I'll show you the top of one of the wings so that it's not so confusing. That will make, make it a little easier to understand what I'm doing. And um, because I think there's a couple of wings that do that. And um, so pause the video and get that much done. I'll come back and show you a little bit more. Okay, I wanted to show you the last thing of the wing. So you do all 15 on that patterning that you're doing of a rib stitch, a one by one rib stitch. And we're to row 29 through 30 is a knit and then a prep decrease and then it says to knit a row and then draw a string bind off. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So slip one and knit all the way over. And then slip one, knit all the way over the other side. That's two rows. Then you're going to do that prep decrease, bring all the stitches together, and then knit a row. Okay. A lot like you did the tail, but I wanted to show you how this is done because it's a little bit more stitches than. Um, and if you think about it, the original pattern for the, play, the red wing blackbird is 15, so this kind of gives you an idea of how you'd go about doing your um, tail on that one. So you go in and you knit two stitches, one, two, take one back, toss the loop over, and move. Now, instead of moving it one by one like I did, I'm going to move it all at once because there are so many stitches. Okay. You're going to do the same thing when you go to do the other side where you cast on this way instead of this way. You're going to do the same thing. You're just going to be doing it the other way. Okay. Not a big deal. The other option is if you don't want to have to do this the other way, um, you can do this like normal, but instead you're going to need to purl two rows rather than knit. You're going to be purling everything. And that will keep you from having to do it on the other side if you're going to do it that way. Uh, so there's always more than one way to do something, and I always say that. All right, so we've managed that in that one. Now we need to bring all these stitches together. Okay, so you see they're all together like that. Then you're going to knit a row. As it says, so that you'll knit a row. And then you'll draw a string bind off, but I don't want to sew up with um, white down the back. So I'm actually going to switch up to black. And I'll show you how to do this. So you're going to do your magic knot to set it up. Okay. Let resistance and cut it. Okay. Now that we've changed color, we're going to cut a tail so we can sew up. And then you're going to come to the opposite side of where your tail is and pull through. Okay. 
Okay, and then when you go to sew it up, yeah, it won't be a white streak going down the back because that's not how it's going to look. Okay. All right. Now on the red winged blackbird, I sew. I had sewn the wing higher up on the shoulder with the magpie. I will sew it a little lower. Okay. All right. Pull that through. Okay, that's what it looks like. Now, if you think you want more white, then take the last two rows when you do the 15 and change it to white if you think you want more white. That's not a problem. So when you go and you sew it on, start lower. Okay. So you want to start lower and sew down, and then what you may want to do is take a black and work that in like that. Okay. But I don't think that's going to be necessary. Okay. So you sew that on, and then when you're going to make the other one, chain cast on to this side, do a knit row back, and then do your short rows. Do, 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 do. And then you do two rows of white, prep decrease over here, bring all the stitches together, do one more knit, and then draw a string as you're just doing it on the other half of the loom. Okay. So. That is how you go in and you take a another pattern that is as close as to what you need, small adjustments to make it a completely different bird breed. Okay, and um, this is more of an intermediate because we did change up the tail a bit and um, we did some color changing and that kind of thing. But that is how you go in and make a magpie from the red-winged blackbird. Okay?